I'm a Christian. I'm saved. So how do I receive this Holy Spirit? Stick around on the channel today as we discuss again the Holy Spirit and how to be filled with the Holy Spirit or how to have the Holy Spirit come upon you. What's going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel, Faith Like That. Welcome back to the family and if you're new to our channel, a welcome to you too. We are a Christian ministry that is dedicated to teaching and preaching sound doctrine and helping you live a clean life for Christ and live it abundantly. Today on our channel, we're discussing the Holy Spirit and how to receive the Holy Spirit or have the Spirit fill you and come upon you. I'm not sure what kind of church you go to, um, but if you've been at church before, sometimes you may have heard people speaking in tongues. You may have heard people get excited, maybe start to cry, maybe dance, maybe run and jump and really uh, experience the spirit there at church. And that's what we're talking about today, about being filled with the spirit and, or about having the Holy Spirit come upon you. So first, starting with being filled with the spirit, there are three simple things that, uh, that are commands for how to be filled with the spirit. And that is first, don't quench the spirit. Second, don't grieve the spirit. And the third is walk in the spirit. What do I mean when I say quenched? Um, when, when I say you can't quench the spirit to actually be filled with the spirit, um, I really mean you can't stifle or you can't suppress what the spirit is doing or trying to do in your life. And sometimes in our lives when we want one thing, maybe God wants another and we don't take time to hear from God about what he wants and what the spirit wants and is trying to accomplish in our life, then we kind of suppress and stifle what he is doing and self-sabotage ourselves. That is the quenching I'm talking about. So if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and experience God, the first thing you have to do is not quench that spirit. The second command that I mentioned was not grieving the spirit. So as a Christian, um, when we grieve the spirit, that means we're doing things that may make him sad or hurt him. Um, when we have sin that enters our lives um, and we make mistakes, it's one thing that we miss the mark and we sin and maybe transgress. Um, there is transgression that's sin. And there's also iniquity that's sin. And that iniquity is when we allow sin to not only come in, but we allow it to take root and we participate in it without limits and unyieldingly. Like we're just, we're just doing sin because this is our way, this is our lifestyle, and we are unapologetic about it, And but we're a Christian. So in that sense, when we're sinning willingly and without, without fault, without confession, without apologizing, without feeling bad for it, then we grieve the Spirit. So if you want to be filled with the Spirit, first you can't quench it, but then you can't grieve the Spirit either. What I mentioned was walking in the Spirit. Um, to best explain this, my analogy is you have to sort of, sort of date or engage the spirit. So the first thing you have to make sure you do to walk in the spirit is the spirit needs to know that you are there. Now he knows you're there as a Christian, especially if you're born again and he's inside you, he knows that you're there, but you should make sure that the spirit knows that you know that he's there. That means your life should be one um, of faith where you can be seen uh, doing faithful things, be praying, be reading your word, be uh, speaking to God, be trying to uh, live according to God's word and commands and doctrines in the Bible. And as you do these things as a Christian that show that you're a Christian and you're pursuing God, the spirit um, is walking with you and you're walking with him and you're one and the same. And, and you're walking in the spirit, you're doing things, you're able to hear from God, uh, you're, you're feeling him come upon you and his presence in your life. And, and you're, you're looking in the word and you're getting answers to your prayers and your questions and things are being revealed to you. And that only happens when you walk in the spirit. So again, when you want to be filled with the spirit, you can't quench the spirit, you can't grieve the spirit, and you have to walk by the spirit. On this video, I wanted to discuss another thing uh, with the spirit. We talked about being filled with the spirit, but it's another thing to have the spirit come upon you. And if you look through the Bible, um, in different instances, and I'll list some over to the side here, where, where men and women in the Bible did things that were great and awesome, performed feasts, they did those things once the Spirit came upon them. 
Um, it's one thing to be walking with the spirit, letting the spirit fill you um, and experiencing the spirit. But like when we see people speak in tongues or heal people or do miraculous things in the Bible, then we see those are instances where the spirit has come upon them. We see that in Jesus when he was baptized that the spirit descended and remained upon him. It didn't say the indwelling of it, but the spirit descended and remained upon him. We also see that in some of the prophets in the Old Testament that the spirit came down and rested upon them, or it'll say the spirit came upon him and then this happened. So it's important to distinguish those two things, that we wanna be filled with the spirit and walking in the spirit, but if we're looking for miraculous things and supernatural abilities or supernatural giftings that people have, those happen when the spirit comes upon you. It can be in you and upon you is a, a, a two different things. So when the, the spirit is upon you and, and it's and it's acting with you, that's what we mean when you say upon you. Thank you for taking some time to, to spend with me today as we continue our discussion in the Holy Spirit. Um, I really enjoy spending time with you all and talking about this, and I'm glad you came out and did that with me as well. I would love to connect with you. Go ahead and drop some comments, drop some prayer requests. I would love to pray with you, to pray for you, uh, and to connect with you in that way. You can also do that with us on Instagram. Uh, we have some stuff up there too, some, some more daily engaging content, and we take prayer requests there as well. So in our next video, uh, we're gonna wrap up talking about the spirit and move on to discussing other things that you may want to know as a new Christian. Um, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel, connect with us as a ministry uh, to be a part of what we're doing. We would love it even more if you shared our videos because we wanna grow our channel and, and do more about sharing that gospel of Jesus Christ and also sharing some sound doctrine and Christian living with those who may need it most. So if you know somebody else who wants to know about these kind of uh, answers, or has these kind of questions, send them some of our videos. Again, thank you for spending time with me today and we'll see you around.